Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to ice dye a shamrock. I'm starting out today's project with a George Brand 3X shirt, and I'm going to fold it directly in half. I'm not centering the shirt, just folding it in half, and I'm using the yardstick to help me get a nice crisp line. And then I'm just going to line up all the edges and smooth it out the best that I can. I really like the George shirts. They're what I like to wear. They're nice and soft and they have a longer length and I really like that. Uh, you get them from Walmart and Walmart's trying to compete with Amazon so they get them here the next day and if you spend like $45 I think you get free shipping which is really easy to do if you buy a few packages of shirts. So I know where I want the center of my pattern to be. And you know, you can put any pattern on this that you want. It just so happens that this one's going to be a shamrock. You're going to airplane fold it. And using the yardstick really does help create a nice straight line. And then I'm going to slide it up underneath and it's going to help me fold it in half. And that helps keep the center point nice and even. Now just fix all your folds and make sure that they line up. When you flip it like that, the underneath has a tendency to sort of get a little wonky, so just check to make sure that everything lines up really nice. I cut out a little heart on a piece of construction paper so I can trace it out using washable marker. And I'm tracing it out on the side that has the four pleats. So one side has four pleats and the other side has two. Now it's time to pleat it. And as you're pleating, you wanna make sure that yellow line or whatever color you make is all in a straight line. And I'll tell you guys, this was really difficult because it is super duper thick. Once you get it pleated up, you want to secure it by using sinew, and using sinew is going to create that white line. You could also use rubber bands or kite string, but for this project, I'm hoping to achieve that nice, crisp white line. And you want to wrap it around about three times and then pull it tight, and then just continue to wrap it. And for this one, I wrap it a lot because I really, really, really want it to hold that die back. I'm really loving the new sinew puller, you guys. It's nice and lightweight and it fits my hand nicely and it's just so easy to wind up. So if you don't know, you can find it on Etsy and it's Boredom with Jen Shop. And I want to clarify something. So the sinew puller is one item and the caddy is another. So if you want to get the caddy and the sinew puller, you have to put both of those in your cart. If you already have the sinew puller, yes, you can just buy the caddy. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I do have an unboxing tutorial and it shows how to wind it up. So go ahead and check that out. For the rest of the shirt, I'm just going to pleat fold it. And again, this shirt is super thick so these pleats are probably a good inch tall and it's not easy because you're trying to grab all of that fabric and you're going around the collar and the shoulder and all those seams. So just do your best. And then I'm just gonna simply secure it uh, with rubber bands, but you could also use kite string or sinew. It's just really a matter of preference. And if you don't wanna pleat fold it, you could scrunch it, um, spiral it, I don't know, whatever you want, that's up to you.
I want to mention where I got the inspiration for this. I want to give credit where credit is due. I saw it on Facebook, and it's Kristen Ryan, and she uh, is out of Chaos Creations. So if you're interested, go on Facebook and look that up. Her tapestry is absolutely beautiful. Now it's time for the fun part, we get to add the dye. And for my shirt, I'm choosing to go with green and purple because I really like that color combination. But for your shirt, you can use any colors that you'd like. I'm layering on just a little bit of bright green right at the tip of the shirt. I'm hoping to achieve sort of a layered effect, like a glowing shamrock from the inside out. And then the Palomino Gold, I'm using that as a drop shadow to represent the gold in the pot of gold. I chose Midnight Blue to go right up against the Palomino Gold because purple and gold make brown. So I was thinking, you know, gold is kind of yellow, so yellow and blue make green, and I was just hoping for a nice transition. Plus, choosing a really dark color so that if it does make brown, you won't really see it. I'm adding a pretty generous layer of the dye. The shirt is really thick, and to achieve good saturation, I wanna make sure that there's enough dye on there. And then I'm just using the back of the spoon to help smooth it on. For those of you that are brand new to tie dye, you might be wondering what I have the shirt sitting in. And that's a piece of vinyl gutter. And I got it from Lowe's. And you bring it home and you can cut it down with a saw. And I used a Sawzall, but you could also use a hacksaw. And using the gutter is genius. And I learned it from Fun Endeavors Angie. What's really nice about it is it holds the ice for you and it also catches all the drippings from the melting ice. So you don't have to worry about it getting all over the place. And it creates really cool muck lines on your project. Next, give your project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. The shirt has already soaked in the soda ash bucket, but we're adding ice and the ice is going to melt and push water through it. And you wanna keep that pH up around 10.5 to 11. This project is going to be an incline ice dye. And I have found that if I add the ice while it's still laying flat on the table, it's just a lot easier. So after a couple of minutes, the ice will start to melt and it sort of freezes to the shirt. That way when you incline it, it doesn't roll downhill, knocking the dye all over the place. I also have a piece of foil down at the end of the shirt to act as a dam for the ice. And I learned this from watching Goyo's Garden and Tie-Dye, Greg. Now check out his channel. He creates tie-dye, he has a really cool voice and he's easy to watch and he does a lot of upcycling and he's just really fascinating. So. After you watch this, head over to his channel and check him out and subscribe to his channel. Mm -hmm. 
Now it's time to create the incline. So I'm gonna set this whole gutter down inside of a tote. And this is not a very steep incline. This tote's about six inches tall. And I'm going to let it batch for 48 hours after the ice melts. And after the first layer of ice melted, I came back and I checked it. I added more ice and I added more dye. It's been approximately 30 hours since the ice melted and I'm rushing the project because I wanted to get it uploaded for today and that's my fault for waiting till the last minute to make a shamrock. But you can really tell that I pulled it early. There is a lot of unbonded dye going down the drain. So I really like to do the 48 hours in this cooler weather. So you wanna start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric and then increase your water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, it goes into the washing machine and I do however many hot water cycles it takes using Kirilon until the hot water cycle water is clear. Once that water is clear, I know that I'm ready for my final hot water cycle using Millsoft and I get both Kirilon and Millsoft from Dharma Trading Company. Then I put it in the dryer and we will come back and we will see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our shamrock incline ice dye after it's been washed and dried and I could use a little practice. But overall, I think it sort of looks like a shamrock. At least I think you get the gist. So the levee broke and the green ended up in the purple and I'm not mad at it. I actually think it looks really pretty and I think this color combination would make a really nice spiral. So there are some things that I would do different and you know, there's room for improvement, but like I said, for a first try, it's not that bad. So you sort of have an idea of what you need to do. So when you make yours, you know, you can change it up to accommodate you. So what do you guys think? And by the way, happy St. Patrick's Day. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.